America is a thoroughly Pacific nation. We've always had a history with Asia. And our future, our security, and our prosperity is inextricably intertwined with Asia. I know the business leaders in attendance today agree. I've now had the privilege to attend the APEC CEO Summit in Singapore, in Yokohama, and in my original hometown of Honolulu, now in Beijing. And I think it's safe to say that few global forums are watched more closely by the business community. There's a good reason for that. Taken together, APEC economies account for about 40 percent of the world's population and nearly 60 percent of its GDP. That means we're home to nearly 3 billion customers and three-fifths of the global economy. And over the next five years, nearly half of all economic growth outside the United States is projected to come from right here in Asia. That makes this region an incredible opportunity for creating jobs and economic growth in the United States. And any serious leader in America, whether in politics or in commerce, recognizes that fact. Now, the last time I addressed this CEO summit was three years ago. Today I've come back at a moment when, around the world, the United States is leading from a position of strength. This year, of course, has seen its share of turmoil and uncertainty. But whether it's our fight to degrade and destroy the terrorist network known as ISIL, or to contain and combat the Ebola epidemic in West Africa, the one constant, the one global necessity, is and has been American leadership. And that leadership in the world is backed by the renewed strength of our economy at home. Today, our businesses have created 10.6 million jobs over the longest uninterrupted stretch of job growth in American history. We're on pace for the best year of job growth since the 1990s. Since we started creating jobs again, the U.S. has put more people back to work than Europe, Japan, and every other advanced economy combined. And when you factor in what's happening in our broader economy, a manufacturing sector that, as Andrew said, is growing now at a rapid pace, graduation rates that are rising, deficits that have shrunk by two-thirds, health care inflation at 50-year lows, and an energy boom at new highs. When you put all this together, what you get is an American economy that is primed for steadier, more sustained growth, and better poised to lead and succeed in the 21st century than just about any other nation on earth. And you don't have to take our word for it. Take yours. For two years in a row, business executives, like all of you, have said that the world's most attractive place to invest is the United States. And we're going to go for a three-peat. We're going to try to make it the same this year. But despite the responsibilities of American leadership around the world, despite our attention to getting our economy growing, there should be no doubt that the United States of America remains entirely committed when it comes to Asia. America is a Pacific power, and we are leading to promote shared security and shared economic growth this century, just as we did in the last. In fact, one of my core messages throughout this trip, from APEC to the East Asia Summit to the G20 in Australia, is that working together we need growth that is balanced, growth that is strong, growth that is sustainable, and growth where prosperity is shared by everybody who is willing to work hard. As President of the United States, I make no apologies for doing whatever I can to bring new jobs and new industries to America. But I've always said, in the 21st century, the pursuit of economic growth, job creation, and trade is not a zero-sum game. One country's prosperity doesn't have to come at the expense of another. If we work together and act together, Strengthening the economic ties between our nations will benefit all of our nations. That's true for the nations of APEC. And I believe it's particularly true 
for the relationship between the United States and China. Uh, I've had the pleasure of hosting President Xi twice in the United States. The last time we met in California, he pointed out that the Pacific Ocean is big enough for both of our nations. And I agree. The United States welcomes the rise of a prosperous, peaceful, and stable China. I want to repeat that. I want to repeat that. We welcome the rise of a prosperous, peaceful, and stable China. In fact, over recent decades, the United States has worked to help integrate China into the global economy. Not only because it's in China's best interest, but because it's in America's best interest and the world's best interest. We want China to do well. We compete for business, but we also seek to cooperate on a broad range of shared challenges and shared opportunities. Whether it's stopping the spread of Ebola or preventing nuclear, non, uh, or preventing nuclear proliferation or deepening our clean energy partnership, combating climate change, a leadership role that as the world's two largest economies and two largest carbon emitters, we have a special responsibility to embrace. If China and the United States can work together, the world benefits. And that's something this audience is acutely interested in. We continually have to work to strengthen the bilateral trade and investment between our two nations. All right, U.S. President Barack Obama there making a speech at the APEC CEO Summit. And just to know, President Obama will meet Chinese President Xi Jinping to exchange in-depth views on bilateral ties on major international regional issues.